So uh, today um, we're gonna do we're gonna go through chapter six, which basically talks about uh, causal graphs. Um, basically, um, I mean the core idea is uh, to uh, represent the knowledge and assumptions uh, before. Uh, before doing any drawing any conclusions um, uh, through uh, these uh, kind of objects which are causal graphs, right? So the idea is, is that uh, uh, until now in these five chapters, the models that we have uh, considered are kind of simple, were simple, uh, and there was no need to, I mean, the assum assumptions were uh, quite clear, quite simple to state, and there was therefore no need to, to, to draw them or display them in a, in, a, in a graph or in any other way. Uh, but now, from, from now on, the, 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 the models will become a little bit more complex, and therefore it's uh, advisable to display what is known about the problem um, uh, to sort, to sort of uh, facilitate communication, right? Um, the thing is that uh, many of these uh, models will, I mean, some, some of the variables might not be known, what is relevant, etc., And we might uh, discover new relevant information uh, um, after a while. Uh, so um, some of the assumptions might be untestable, but uh, let's say, uh, what we try to uh, uh, present uh, through a causal graph is um, the knowledge that, that is available about a problem of interest at a given point, right? <laughs> so actually, <clears throat> uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go through a sequence of uh, three chapters, I believe, um, whose core idea would be causal graph. So today, basically, we provide the the um, basic information about them. And then on seven, uh, chapter seven and eight, they, uh, I mean, we, we shall end up with uh, um, a comment on uh, the strengths of causal graphs in, in, in uh, identifying possible biases, right? Uh, and we shall, uh, chapter seven and chapter eight will be devoted to those, those biases. So uh, to start, um, I'm going to make the graphs slightly different to to what the what the book says, right? I'm I'm going to use uh, I mean I'm going to use something like this. Well, it's not a major difference. I'm just putting some balls in rather than. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, actually, that's what we use in computer science or decision analysis. We we draw them like like that, and I'm more used to that. And basically, this is our first example of um, a causal graph in this session. Um, so you can see that th this is a, um, a directed uh, acyclic graph, right? Uh, as a graph, it has uh, nodes uh, and arcs. So nodes uh, represent uh, uh, variables which are relevant in the in a in a problem, right? So in this case, it would be uh, um, I mean the relevant variables would be L, A, and Y. Um, a would be, for example, uh, in our case, would be the treatment, uh, which is uh, I believe uh, administering a heart transplant. Y would be the outcome, which is in this case uh, uh, surviving or not, and L uh, in this case might be a causal thing, like um, for example um, the disease condition, a, a disease condition which may, might be bad or not bad. So uh, we have nodes as a graph. We have nodes, and we have our, we have arcs. Uh, because um, I mean, there's there's other um, there's other um, I mean, these kind of graphs appear as with other names. Uh, for example, they appear as Bayesian networks 
or probabilistic inference diagrams. Uh, or they appear also as uh, belief nets. But this, uh, I mean, the focus here is on causal uh, graphs. So uh, the uh, arcs have a meaning, a special meaning, right? In these ones, they have only a probabilistic relationship or influence. But in this, in this, uh, for the discussion that we are going to have and for this book, uh, this, uh, the, the presence of an arc means uh, that uh, the antecessor is a cause of, of this. And this means that uh, at least for one, uh, for one uh, individual, uh, this, uh, uh, this variable has a causal effect on, on, on the other part, right? So uh, presence of an arc uh, means uh, um, um, a causal effect, right? And uh, the absence of, uh, of an arc uh, means uh, no causal effect. So we shall see, uh, I mean, we, we could have something and we shall see in a minute uh, some kind of example, which would be uh, something like, like this. So the, the main difference being that so this, uh, this, the absence of this arc in this case indicates that there's no causal effect between L and A. Okay. So uh, it's a graph uh, and it's directed and acyclic. Directed means that um, uh, well, the, the, the arcs are, have, a, have a, an arrow, right? The, the arcs are arrows. And uh, acyclic means that there's no cycles. And this is quite logical because, I mean, the, the sort, there's a time logic. There's a time logic in these uh, graphs uh, from left to the right. Uh, that this is uh, probably inherited from uh, what are called stru structural uh, equation models from economics, because I mean then there is this this flow of information in this direction, and they I mean they are not acyclic because we move we move in, into that direction, so therefore there is no cycles. Okay. So um, most of the, uh, I mean, the discussion that we have had so far uh, was based on intervention, uh, on counterfactual, sorry. And there is a relation uh, between uh, causal graphs and counterfactuals that we shall actually see. So uh, the, the language that we used we have been using uh, can be um, um, included within uh, uh, castle graphs, but this is uh, deferred to the ch to chapter seven, and this is through uh, uh, what is called single world uh, single world. I think it's intervention graph. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, quite frequently they are um, in, a, in a kind of separate worlds, but uh, they can be combined. Um, I mean, to compare this with uh, uh, Pearl's, uh, Pearl's book, and uh, Pearl's actually, uh, Pearl actually starts with uh, these graphs and studies them in a lot of depth. And then they, he, end up, he ends up, uh, uh, talking about counterfactuals, and in this book they have adopted the uh, the other way, but they 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 have the same. Okay, so um, they there are some conditions that um, I mean a dark is is a causal lag under certain conditions, uh, which is convenient to remember or to define. So basically, um, we we see, we say that uh, a DAG is a causal causal DAG or a causal graph if uh, uh, conditional on its uh, direct causes. So I mean, given this variable, 
we know um, we know its its causes, right? Conditional on knowing these direct causes. Any any variable. I mean, this example is not very good because it's small, but any variable conditional on these direct causes is in the is independent of other variables which are not his descendants. So I don't know. If, if, Imagine that there's a, a, a third uh, variable here, something like this. <clears throat> so uh, this variable would be independent. So given uh, conditional on this, uh, and given uh, the variable would be independent from the other <clears throat> from the other variable. So this has a this is by the way this is called like a telephone Markov assumption. So there is Markov assumption. This this is the causal Markov assumption, and this has a very important um, a very important uh, uh, comment, which is um, uh, that common causes uh, of any pair of var variables. Uh, Uh, in the graph, it uh, must be in the graph. Even, even if we don't measure it, measure them, right? So we, that was a discussion we had like two weeks ago about one graph that uh, we were trying to, to paint and this means that the graph that we were using is not causal. I mean, that that was from a medicine problem. Um, uh, the guys who passed us the, the, the data, for example, were not uh, uh, measuring anything related to diet. That was uh, from a cardiovascular disease thing. Uh, so we had no nothing, for, for example, concerning uh, the salt or the sugar or the, the fat that this person so therefore, our graph was not causal uh, because we're. I mean, we, I mean, even if we were not measuring, we should have included these these uh, these these notes. Okay. So um, one example uh, compared with this uh, to talk with this. Uh, there's no. So, um, <clears throat> so um, in, going back to this example, uh, suppose that uh, the heart transplant is uh, delivered uh, uh, independently of the of the state. Um, um, to to uh, patients. Uh, in this case, um, and I mean, if we knew that uh, if we knew that uh, the uh, st uh, disease, um, uh, the state the state of the of the patient is relevant for either for 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 both um, um, for both. Um, Providing the the uh, treatment and for the I mean, for the outcome, we would know we would know that uh, I mean L is a common cause, and we would need to include this uh, if we want. We would we, I mean we would need to include this uh, node uh, to have in order to have a causal graph. So this wouldn't be a causal graph, uh, and we would need to include this <laughs> if we want uh, them to be a causal. Graph. Um, I I I made this. Um, um, I mean, this, this would be like the informal definition of a causal graph, but this can be uh, expressed through, like, uh, let's say, three more uh, precise conditions. The first one is um, 
if uh, uh, if no arrow from a node i to uh, a node to the j node. Um, uh, uh, no causal, no direct causal effect on BG, on BI, right? This is a frequency condition. Um, all common causes, I, I said that one, but all common causes, even if, I'm, if unmeasured, Are included. And uh, any variable is cause is a cause of its descendants. Right? Uh, so this uh, like fuzzy uh, uh, kind of fuzzy definition is um, expressed uh, more in more precise terms through these three conditions, right? So that would be like the precise definition of a of a causal tag, right? And this uh, entails that the uh, the density or the or the probability model over the graph is uh, is. Uh, has this uh, structure <laughs> so there's probability model over the whole uh, over the whole uh, uh, graph it's uh, basically uh, the probability at at each node given its parents actually that is this is like kind of a bit uh, of i mean it's Kind of confusing, but because this holds for any DAG, right? So, I mean, it's not just for causal DAGs, but for any DAG that that would hold, right? Uh, it's also called, by the way, I forgot the other name, which is probabilistic graphic systems. Okay. So, um, Put in, in context, uh, this um, this was the um, this is the model that uh, we use for the uh, conditionally randomized uh, um, experiment, and this was what we use for a randomized or a marginally randomized experiment. So that that was. Uh, like uh, to recover uh, the comment that we say that uh, for very simple, for, I mean, the models that we had done so far were kind of simple. And we actually, need, uh, for all the kind of uh, explanations that we had, we, di we didn't need these uh, graphs. We, we did the explanation without using a graph. But the idea, the, <clears throat> the idea is that uh, from now on, the, the problems that we, I mean, um, in, in chapter six, uh, six, but certainly in chapter seven and eight, the models will be more complex, and we shall need to uh, we shall need to display the graph to understand it better. Okay. Yeah. So this can be used as well for observational studies. Now, um, so that, that's the kind of definition. The, th the next thing to discuss is, uh, there's two important things to discuss, are uh, how do relate um, uh, causal diagram, uh, so causal diagrams.
with two conditions which are important. One is uh, uh, marginal independence. Or independence. Independence. <laughs> and uh, conditional independence. So, um, uh, yeah, that's the So basically, um, the first uh, let, let's go, let's go uh, with the first one, and then we go through the second. Okay, so we go uh, with the uh, with this example first, uh, and the uh, I mean the example that they put is. Um, and aspirin here is having aspirin and this is having um, a heart uh, a disease or heart attack. Uh, and aspirin is uh, randomly assigned uh, so in this case, um, we had, um, we can talk about we had this, so there was a causal effect. And in this case, we should expect, uh, when there is a, a causal effect, we should expect that uh, there is, uh, an association. <laughs> um, and in, in this case, I mean, this is, uh, you, you can think of this like uh, some kind of wire which uh, passes or a pipe in which there is information flow, et cetera. So uh, in this case, there's there's no independence. <clears throat> in an example like this, Where uh, I mean to illustrate it, uh, we could be, say that uh, this is carrying a lighter. Uh, this is uh, cigarette smoking. Uh, and this is uh, lung cancer. Right? So uh, and I think we, we have used this one. So uh, carrying a lighter um, um, is not, has no causal effect on, on lung cancer, right? So um, we would expect, in, in, I mean, we expect this here. So there's no cause causal effect between, and therefore there's no arrow. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, cigarette uh, smoking has some uh, causal effect on on these two variables. So uh, that if you smoke, you are more likely to uh, have lung, lung cancer, and if you smoke, you are more likely to have a car uh, uh, to carry a lighter. Uh, so uh, the question that, um, I mean, we, 
we we wouldn't um, we wouldn't expect this to happen. I mean, we, we would question this, uh, and uh, actually, uh, so there's no castle, but uh, there's no castle effect. But we would expect um, uh, question this, but we would act actually expect them to be uh, uh, related, right? So that that wouldn't be the. I mean, it wouldn't be the case that uh, this is. Because uh, they are, uh, I mean, L serves to uh, communicate uh, A and Y, right? And ha I mean, having the information that uh, this person carries a lighter uh, gives us some information that he might be, it makes it uh, more likely that he's a, uh, a cigarette smoker and therefore uh, that uh, he has a lung cancer. So. So even if there is no causal effect, uh, uh, we have uh, knowing something uh, makes that uh, provides us um, uh, a better uh, uh, prediction. I found that this is here. Good. And a third example. <clears throat> the third example that we shall consider in preparation for important concepts. The third example is uh, something like this. So this is uh, being a smoker. Uh, this is having a heart disease. And this, uh, for the example, this is having a haplotype. So in this example, there's no arrow from here to here, so there's no causal effect uh, from uh, having this haplotype of being a smoker. But uh, there's arrows from A to L and from Y to L. So this means that uh, both haplotype and being a smoker have um, 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 a causal effect on heart disease, right? Um, this is expressed as So uh, the, the lack of this arrow um, um, is expressed. Uh, is expressing this. Um, but, uh, but in this case, um, we expect uh, this to happen. Um, so we would expect no association between A and Y, uh, and basically that that's uh, um, I mean L is what is called a collider, and the idea is that this 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 guy uh, blocks the flow of information from A to Y, and that that's uh, the what we expect in this case. So. Uh, and to sum up, um, I mean this these three politics A, B, and C summarize uh, the relation between causal diagrams and uh, independence or marginal independence, and basically uh, uh, 
this is summarized in a, in a result which says that two variables are uh, marginally associated. Uh, if one causes the uh, one causes the other, so that would be A, right? Uh, or they share a common cause. That would be that one, right? Uh, otherwise, they are a marginal. Um, one example would be this one. Uh, by the way, the, the book um, advises that uh, it, it's going to be uh, informal, right? In the in the arguments, this means that well, uh, I think probably even more informal than than the book. Uh, but uh, most of the, I mean, all of these can be uh, rigorously justified. And one example would be. I mean, the book that we saw the last year on the third, et cetera, it justifies this a lot, et cetera, much more, right? Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna go now uh, to the second part, which is conditional independence. This is uh, super important. Uh, this is a very important property uh, in, In, what is, how would we say in in in, in belief nets? I mean, I mean beyond uh, causal. Uh, this is very important because I mean this is the uh, the basis probably uh, for making efficient the computations required in this kind of models. Um, it also, um, from a computational point of view, it's it's a. Uh, reduces the storage required, uh, uh, I mean, the kind of tables that are required. I mean, the, the models here uh, get much, <coughs> uh, much reduced. And I mean, taking advantage of uh, conditional independence is essential for making the computations that uh, uh, will be illustrated next uh, in the next, in seven and eight. I mean, like, uh, if we want to compute uh, things like, uh, I don't know what is the probability of this given that or whatever um, to make it uh, to make it uh, efficient. I mean the algorithms to 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 make those computations uh, will take advantage of of this conditional independence property. Right. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put examples. Uh, uh, in parallel to A, B, and C, so I'm going to make A prime, uh, B prime, and C prime to illustrate uh, uh, the relations between causal uh, diagrams and conditional independence. So the first one would be an A prime, right? And we had aspirin and heart attack. Um, so we put uh, an intermediate uh, variable. Well, let, let's put it first at first for just for a second, uh, something like this. Because that, that this is actually how in the I don't know, in the computer science books uh, or I don't know, statistics books that's how it appears, right? Uh, so we took here we had here aspirin, uh, we had their heart heart attack. And we put here um, platelet aggregation. So platelet are, are uh, plaquetas, right? That's one of the words that I, I learned. So <clears throat> basically, uh, what he's saying is that aspirin has uh, is a has is a causal 
uh, has a causal effect. I mean, having aspirin on 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 the level or the quality of plat uh, plat platelet aggregation, and this has a causal effect on on heart attack, right? Uh, so that, that basically says aspirin has a, 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 an effect. I, I mean, this is a descendant, so this is a father, uh, the parent, uh, yeah, the, the, ans, the parent of this, and this is the parent of this. So this is the grand uh, parent, is the grandparent. Therefore, this is uh, there's a causal effect. So aspirin has a causal effect over heart attack because uh, it has an effect over blood. So uh, B is what is called a mediator, by the way. So the question is, uh, is there association, uh, suppose for a moment that we we fix, I mean, suppose that we fix, uh, fix the level of, of B, right? And this is when uh, they introduce this uh, slightly different notation, right? Okay, so this means that uh, we have fixed um, to high or low, whatever, the level of, 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 of B or plan. So we, we, what we, are, we are asking, is there an effect, uh, given that we know uh, the value of B, is there an effect between A and Y? That's a question that we, we put. And the answer is no, right? Uh, <clears throat> So uh, basically, if we know B, the information that A provides, it's irrelevant to, to, to predict Y, okay? Uh, right, so um, we, we say that A and Y, A and Y are uh, conditionally independent given B. Uh, basically, what we have uh, is, I mean, th this is expressed and we write this as a right. So this is uh, one example of, of conditional independence. So uh, for the next example, uh, we put it in, in parallel. Let's put it a bit higher. It would be our D prime example. Um, so, um, Right. So remember, remember that that was an example. Uh, so, I mean, if, if you check it in parallel, uh, we are, let's say, breaking, uh, we have here association. By considering this in the middle, uh, we were breaking the association. So we're going to have the same. In this case, we had association in this case because they, these two guys were sharing the uh, common cause. <clears throat> so the question we formulate is, if we observe, so we make it, oh, oh, I mean, if we fix the value of this, will there will be still some association, right? And the answer will be no, uh, is no. Uh, so we have um, um, the, in this case, we have the probability of Y basically the same here. <coughs> we write the same. Yeah. Right. 
And our last, uh, our last uh, example would be would be a C prime, right? Our last example would be uh, C prime. Uh, and here, suppose that we uh, fix one of these. Uh, suppose L. So remember that it was an example of, uh, uh, I mean, there was an association that where it was marginally, margin or but it was independent. So in this case, um, we have that, uh, so a condition, Conditioning on uh, um, I mean, yeah, conditioning on A. Right. And what is more more what is even more uh, relevant is that this extends to the descendants of L. So we have a situation like this. So suppose that uh, there is a, a descendant of, of L and that we uh, make the analysis fixing the value of L. So we again have uh, this situation. Okay. Now, what is is interesting? That's uh, one of the technical points, but uh, I think we technical points in the book or fine point. I, I don't remember very well. Um, but it's important for the next one because it, it talks uh, on this separation, which is used on the um, the back door. What is back door? Back door. Back door. Yeah, the back door, etc. That uh, back door criteria, etc. That is used uh, afterwards. So what is important is that um, these basically are the conditions used for what is called uh, this separation, which is required for what is this separation. So this separation um, refers to um, when a, a path, the question is, well, this separation. So whether a path is, is blocked or open, that's uh, so th there's four 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 conditions. So for so if no variables, uh, 
being conditioned on. So a path is blocked. If two uh, arrowheads on path collide, some variable uh, on the path. One example or two examples, sorry. So in this example, L LAY is open, so there's no collision, etc. It's, this is open, but uh, a this part, this and this, and uh, this is blocked <coughs> because uh, there is this collider, and there's a collision here. More, more examples, uh, and this refers to this uh, path containing non collider uh, uh, that has been conditioned on. that has been conditioned on uh, is blocked. Uh, and that will be the, the example. Let me write it again. Uh, three third uh, collider that has been conditioned on uh, that uh, does not block a path. It's open. And we have the example there. So uh, does not block apart me uh, in, in it will entail uh, that uh, there is association given L and therefore it's, it's like information flows. And finally, a collider that has descendant uh, uh, that has been conditioned on that does not work. Apart. And the example would be this one. So that not, does not block a path, entails that uh, uh, there's like flow of information from y, uh, A to Y. But the example is uh, C. Okay. 
So I, again, I insist uh, that this is, uh, uh, let's say, informal, but uh, Perl's book um, makes it very algebraic and, and justifies it completely. So uh, we have uh, these, these four cases, uh, which is quite important because uh, um, then we can say, Then we can say path blocked uh, if, I mean, we are basically summarizing this. A, a path is blocked if, if and only if, contains a non collider. That has been conditioned <laughs> uh, or contains a uh, contains a uh, collider. Collider that has not been conditioned. And has no descendants. That. Uh, have been conditioned. So this is covering uh, this. If it's if it's not blocked, it's open, right? Uh, and then we say two variables, and that's a concept. That's important concept. Two variables are be separated. Default paths between them are blocked, right? <laughs> uh, right? Uh, two sets of variables are be separated if all paths between them are blocked. Okay. And finally, in a and, and that's the, the important thing. In, in a DAG, uh, if, a, if A is D separated, from B conditional on C, and A, <coughs> B and C are sets of, of sets of variables, uh, then A is uh, statistically independent of B given C. These are, um, but this is independent whether it's causal or not. This is for attack. And that's uh, actually, that was quite important uh, in the 90s, the, these conditional independence actions by Philip David and all, all these people. Uh, so that's, um, right? So that's, that, I mean, that, that all, the, all this stuff is basically going in, into that, this direction. 
So in a DAG, if a, if A is separated from B conditionally, uh, then it's a statistically independent form. And this is this facilitates the algebra uh, or the computations in I mean, to make efficient computations. This is basically drawing on this. Now, um, this, this goes in this direction. Uh, we could think, uh, I mean, we could ask, somebody could ask about the other direction. And this doesn't happen always. Uh, for this, um, uh, So uh, there is a property called uh, uh, faithfulness. So the, the other way is no, that doesn't always happen. And when it happens, uh, the property is called faithfulness. Uh, I mean, a, B, if, if whenever A uh, <coughs> implies that A is B separated, from B given C, um, then, okay. Uh, uh, again, in the, I mean, the, um, the algorithms that were uh, developed to make computations, oh, sorry, to build, um, um, I mean, for causal, well, for, uh, uh, Bayesian network discovery. Uh, in our case, uh, I mean, we should uh, we should, uh, causal network discovery. Uh, they uh, they put the emphasis on on building. I mean, they, they were saying, well, algorithm is is quite nice because it if if if, it, if the data has been generated from a faithful model, we discover uh, we, we discover the faithful probability distribution. Um, We, we discovered a faithful probability distribution uh, that uh, generated the, uh, those data. So that was a kind of cool also at the, at the end of the 90s, I mean, to study these kind of things. So when is some model not generating a non-faithful data set? Uh, because, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't, uh, because, I mean, it, this doesn't happen. Uh, not all models are faithful. Why not? Uh, not you, have, you have to read the example in there. No, but I mean, in general, is this because of noise? Uh, um, lack of knowledge or, or wrong? Uh, well, it, it was because, uh, I mean, the example that uh, uh, Simon uh, did on effect uh, modification is this kind of thing. Uh, there could be a change, uh, uh, change of effects, and they compensate. Is is this kind of Simpson paradox uh, sure. thing? But if, if you are super interested, you, you can read the examples. In I just made a summary of that. And, and, and you can also have a spurious statistical dependence, because, for instance, a small sample size, which is what you call noise, which does not appear in the graph. So yeah, can be. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, so far, I think until this chapter, yeah. they assume yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's, uh, I think it's not until chapter nine or 10 that yeah. they, mm. yeah. But even if there's infinite sample sizes, blah, 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 is the, the kind of thing. Yeah, as a, as a sort of, um, as a sort of side comment. Uh, this is a very conservative. Uh, they, they they talk about uh, faithfulness, but there is more. The, the other concept that they use is moral, the moral graph, and they they, they say that uh, well, it, it's a moral graph when the ancestor ancest the ancestor nodes are married, etc. So that's when well, the parents are married. Sorry. Okay. Uh, now. Um, just a quick comment. Uh, <clears throat> um, this has appeared several times. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of um, um, like um, a warning. Yeah, let's let's call it a warning. So um, we we spend a lot of time we, uh, on interval on um, when we were I mean, on the on the previous chapters on counterfactuals uh, discussing exchangeability, positivity, and consistency. So I think it has appeared at, at, least, at least like three three times. Uh, so they put this warning that uh, I mean you, uh, it, it's clear that uh, that they've made a point uh, uh, with counterfactuals, but with uh, graphical with these graphical models, we we still need this uh, exchangeability, positivity, and consistency. And actually, they they spend some time uh, justify or, or trying to explain uh, uh, positivity and consistency on. In 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 DAX, right? Uh, they spend some time on exchangeability in, in in later chapters. I don't remember if it's in seven or eight. Uh, <clears throat> okay, just a comment. Uh, um, the other um, the other uh, important thing, I would say. I mean, the pretty important thing, I mean, they say it, and I have read it in a couple of medical uh, articles, is that uh, it's, uh, a, 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 and also it motivates chapter seven and eight, it's that uh, uh, DACs are, are very good, or uh, causal graphs, causal graphs are very good uh, for identifying uh, biases, right? So they will spend uh, quite a lot of time on on identifying biases, etc. Uh, well, they give an explanation, but I think that probably the best uh, the best is to give a brief example, uh, which is the last example that I put on the on the figure. Um, so now let, let, let's let's say this would be this would be like a trip uh, um, a prototypical prototypical uh, causal graph in, in medicine. <laughs> because it, it has all the, well, almost all the things that you, you could expect. Um, so we, we would miss, uh, as, I mean, to make it more general, we would miss here uh, like variables that we, uh, that are, I mean, we recognize as relevant, but we don't measure as we had in, in, in the previous, but I think this is more, more or less everything that we, you can. Okay, so <clears throat> here we have this treatment, which ha can have, uh, which has a causal effect on, on the outcome, right? Uh, there is a mediator, which put, we put it here. There is colliders, uh, well, there's a collision here, and there is a confounder, which would might be a common cause for the treatment and, and outcome. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the idea would be: I, I want to know, I, I want to measure or assess the the impact of uh, treatment over the outcome, right? <clears throat> Uh, um, I mean, what would I control or what would I con should I con condition? That, that, that would be the typical question that we, we would do. Uh, so one thing would, would be um, 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 for example, uh, I could control for this one uh, and I, I could do this uh, to see 
um, 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 how do you say? I mean, the, the, the part of, of the effect that is due only to the treatment and not to this mediator. And then the, the idea, uh, the, the, the idea, I mean, to find uh, what, uh, I mean, what could be the biases, uh, I could discuss whether I should control this or, or, or this, right? And I hope to get it right. Uh, um, if I, uh, I mean, right, if I control for this, the collider, I open, I open the path, right? Um, therefore, I this is good, right? If I a uh, condition on this, I would close the path. I would block the path, and I would introduce a bias. Okay, that would be if I. I hope to have given this okay. Uh, so. I mean the best. I mean the best, or a, a very good thing of of these graphs is that just by looking at the at the at the um, at the graph, you can see what you need to control or or or, or not, right? Uh, the uh, we will go in chapter seven and eight. We'll 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 discuss about these these two guys, right? One final thing is that. Uh, <clears throat> Um, these, I mean, these graphs should uh, reflect the knowledge as we know uh, today, right? Uh, the assumptions that are reasonable today. But it could be the case that, uh, I mean, next year we discover a new, uh, I don't know, a new virus which affects this uh, relation and we would need to include it, or we discover that uh, eating. Uh, uh, eating, um, eating. I don't know. Lots of uh, 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 carbonized uh, meat uh, increases um, uh, cancer or whatever, and we would need to include, for example, in this uh, cardiovascular uh, thing, uh, like uh, three or four years ago, uh, people people would include uh, uh, alcohol, alcohol consumption. <laughs> but now it's quite clear that alcohol consumption is not so relevant for hypertension, so we would remove. So, uh, I mean, like a sort of last uh, uh, note of caution, uh, these graphs uh, reflect, uh, I mean, should, tr should try to reflect uh, a common knowledge, uh, a current knowledge, but uh, it could be, as I said, I mean, science evolves and we discover new things, etc. And uh, I mean, this is contingent of, on, of what we currently know. Um, I mean, there's a little bit more blah, blah. Um, so there, there's, a, there's a, I, I made very, very briefly the, the, the stuff on biases, but it's, and they also say that uh, for the um, modification of treat of uh, effects that uh, Chema discussed, they are not so good. Uh, but I just, uh, I just uh, wanted to tell the, the good, the good, uh, the good news. <laughs> so, in the next two weeks, uh, we'll we'll go again through this and through this confounding and, and collision. And that's it. Any any comments or questions? I, I, I bored uh, or, or or either they were very hungry or I bored <laughs> for for people. Yeah. Thomas? Yeah, I, just, just one question. I, I shall send the, the, the graph. One of the graphs was not okay, so I, I shall send them at some point during the weekend. So with this thing that you were commenting at the end, the United States is kind of sensitive to analysis for graphs. So sensitivity say, analysis yeah, in the sense that uh, uh, we know yeah. more. Yeah, uh, sorry. Suddenly we know that there is another effect or that the structure of the graph changes. Is there a way to uh, estimate you know, what it's? Yeah, yeah. In that uh, yeah. Um, so uh, for sure you can change the probability tables here. 
and see the impact. Um, I don't know you change a little bit the the tables here, and you want to uh, you see the impact on over right. And also, you can um, you you can see. I mean, things that uh, people do is also uh, remove one of the links and see the impact over the sort of target node. That's quite important for uh, to identify uh, which node has uh, the biggest impact over the result. So you eliminate. Uh, you assume that you haven't observed. Uh, I mean, the typical things that you. Try to compute our. Um, so you want to compute p. In this case, would be p of outcome, given many of the. Uh, let, let's say uh, treatment one, uh, confirm, uh, let's say collider one. Uh, yeah, collider one, collider two, and collider three, right? Let's say treatment two, and and things that you can uh, do is. Uh, so you 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 have seen this and you see the impact. And let's say this is something that uh, worries you because the probability for somebody who has this uh, this uh, variable, these variable values is pretty high of, of, of dying. Right? So you want to see which of these is more relevant into this uh, bad result. So one thing that you do is uh, you eliminate, uh, well, you change one, uh, you, you remove one of these, or you put these to uh, good levels, right? For example, suppose that this is exercise, right? And it is good for not uh, having hypertension. Uh, and you have come out uh, with the, uh, you, you came out with uh, the, uh, I mean, this is uh, not doing exercise or not following the WHO recommendations. Uh, you could move this to uh, a better one by one to better levels to see if this has an impact. And this helps you to, you can you can use um, I mean it's not just a difference of of probabilities but you could use uh, um, information measures like Kullback, uh, Liger, and all these things to compare the distributions given that you modify in any of this. So that's that's the kind of things that I've seen people do. Uh, for example, um, there's a software. Uh, which is quite good, I mean, to play, etc., which is called Genie. Uh, and you can use this for just, just for, I mean, it, it's, it's more for, for, it covers also influ uh, decision influence diagrams, but you can do it for probabilistic uh, thing. And you can, it has some sens sensitivity analysis tools. They have tornado diagrams and so on. And, but basically it's, uh, modifying one of the nodes and, and seeing how the probability, the relevant probability uh, changes. Uh, but by the way, I forgot two things, um, in, uh, two important things that we should cover probably, uh, which are in the chapter. Uh, it is, uh, one is, uh, yeah, that's one discussion is uh, a, a causal discovery, yeah. right? Which basically is given a bunch of data. How do you build, um, I mean, Try to build uh, automatically the, the diagram, right? I think we should. The boss should uh, order somebody to to read it. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, at some point, uh, I was saying uh, this uh, consistency, positivity, etc. That this uh, give a, a very important role to treatment nodes in this. Uh, and some people use uh, rather than uh, probabilistic nodes. Uh, it's actually something that you can do. So they use uh, decision nodes, uh, and in in the language of uh, influence uh, decision, they want influence diagrams. And there's actually a causal theory, etc., for for, uh, for this uh, based on influence diagrams based on decision decision theoretic uh, computations. And that this is probably, so uh, Jesus Terquides had, but I think he's not around. So Jesus Terquides had men uh, mentioned his interest in talking about this. There's some, some papers by Philip David again. And I think we should talk on, on this at some point. And that's it. So next, uh, 
Next Friday, one on seven. Johnny seven. So thank you. <laughs>